And when I went to Apple, I think I had like something like 300,000 subscribers. And they're like, oh, by the way, you can't make any more YouTube videos. And I'm like, you guys asked me to come work for you. Like I kept telling Apple that I'm like, nobody cares that I work for Apple. It's way <laughs> yeah. cooler that I work for a- N- NASA. You've been by NASA. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So relax, guy. <laughs> I was like, no, like uh, that's not an d- option. So they're like, fine, you can, but wait like three months. I was like, besides guys, you have nothing to worry about. Like my videos don't get that many views. So literally the first video we're getting Apple, I did that, that, that watermelon one. And it had like 30 million views in like four days. <laughs> and, and, wow. and in those time, those were crazy yeah, numbers. And so I was like, yeah. <laughs> like did they say anything? No, but th- it was like a weird, it was always weird with them, with my channel. Cause like when I first went on Kimmel, Kimmel asked me to go on and like, after I'd been there, maybe eight months and it made it all the way up to like a senior VP one level below yeah. Tim cook. And the response was like, we should be focused on making great products. So it wasn't like an actual no, but it was like clear that they didn't want it. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, I, you can't tell me what to do on my weekends. Like I, as long as I don't say I work for Apple, which I was never going to, you can't tell me I can't kayak. So you can't tell me I can't go on Kimmel. So I just did it, which obviously was a very good decision. Cause yeah. like we're very good friends now. And it was like, that's been a great, just a lovely relationship on a lot of uh, different fronts. So it's like, I'm glad I didn't listen to them. And then eventually it did get leaked. I worked there. There was a patent. This is all public. So I can kind of talk about it, but it's like, there's a patent about using virtual reality and self-driving cars. And I was like the lead author on the patent and they like a bunch of places covered it and said, this is like the patent of the decade. Like that's what Pat, that's what like one of the Apple Mac rumors said. This is like a crazy patent, blah, blah, blah. And but no one noticed I was the lead author. Oh, wow. And I was notable oh, enough wow. at that time. They should notice. And then a year later, Variety, I don't know how, somehow realized my name was on that. And then they leaked the story and it was a thing. And for about a week, all my employees, because it said like YouTube megastar Mark Rover, oh. where my all my buddies were like, oh, you're a megastar. Yeah, and you said they were like harassing tough. me yeah, at yeah, Apple. Yeah, but yeah. it was like, yeah. it was kind of nice that I was like out that I work for Apple because then I just didn't feel this like, oh my gosh, the secret's going to leak Skeleton and then Apple's going to be yeah. super pissed. Right. And so then it was overblown. It wasn't a big thing. Everyone still says former NASA engineer. I kept telling Apple that. I'm like, nobody cares that I work for Apple. It's way <laughs> yeah. cooler that I work for a- a- NASA. You've been one up by NASA. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So relax, guys. You have nothing. <laughs> You're working like a, a very high-end job and making YouTube videos at the same time. Like throughout the progression, that's unlike anyone else's startup YouTube career. Yeah. Right? Was there... Was there something nice to the fact that like, the YouTube channel wasn't your full-time job? Yeah, 100%. And, and that there wasn't financial pressure on those videos? Or did you feel any sense of pressure on the videos? Like, <laughs> yeah, what was that experience It's like? a good point. Uh, so uh, first of all, I'll say, and like, I don't think anyone who's watching these, I, I didn't say this for a long time because people didn't know like what kind of money you can make on YouTube, but it's like probably for at least two and a half years, I was making more money on YouTube than I was at Apple before right. I quit. You know right. what I mean? So it wasn't necessarily like a financial, part of it was a financial thing, but you're exactly right. Like, A, I'm a conservative engineer. I would say I'm a reluctant leader. I'm a reluctant, like, I will eventually do it if I have to. But like the idea of just like creating a massive team and all this stuff, it's like, man, the more I could keep it is just like, I'm just a dude who's making these videos. It's a hobby. It's no big deal. Just helps my own brain. You know what I mean? Then feeling like this pressure, let's say I quit when I had 100,000 subscribers and was like, all right, and you know what? I'm gonna mortgage my house, I'm gonna take out a loan and I'm gonna hire 10 people. That is such a different frame of mind than I'm just a dude who works at this company who on my nights and weekends and spare time, you know, with even having a family and doing other stuff, like I'm gonna work on these videos. It's a side hustle. It's like such a different mind frame. Totally. But I think I'd have to imagine that making more money than your job at Apple on YouTube, like there has to be a level of excitement or validation or, or something attached to that. Yeah. A hundred percent. And also like all my buddies at Apple thought it was so cool. Like yeah. I had a senior VP call me into his office just cause like his kids says he'd seen the videos and he thought it was really interesting and cool. And he wanted to say like, Hey, I like this stuff, you know? It's yeah. so like literally at work, I was getting more opportunities because of the YouTube stuff, you know, um, that idea That's interesting. that yeah. specifically that patent about, again, that's public, so I can say this, but using virtual reality and self-driving cars that like I was the lead author on, like that literally came because one of the managers said, hey, you're doing all these cool ideas for your own personal YouTube stuff. 
what's your cool idea? What's your banger idea you're going to do for Apple? <laughs> and it was like three weeks later, I was sitting in a meeting, like getting some training on some finite element analysis. And I was like, I had this idea and I'm like, I started shaking because like immediately, like most of the ideas and it's pretty extensive, a lot of different variations is came within like, I'd say 15 minutes. And I just, it, it was a challenge from the folks at Apple to, to do more YouTube stuff for, for Apple, Apple. Wow. you know, and it turned mm. out to be, I think like a good thing for them. So when it comes to, you know, ideas, cause it seems like whether it's engineering or YouTube kind of in the business of ideas, you know, you're in the business of like thinking of something different and, mm. and trying to implement it. One thing I find really fascinating about you is how few ideas make it to air mm. on your YouTube channel. You're not a data guy, which I'm learning about yeah. um, about you, but average views per video on your channel are significantly higher than that of Mr. Beast. Um, really? Obviously, he has over 700 oh, yeah. videos. He has over <laughs> 700 videos, but on average, each one of your uploads performs you know, higher than his. You've also yeah. had a video cross 50 million views every year for the last seven years. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah, we're not data guys. <laughs> we have a data we guy. Data. Yeah. Yeah. We have That's a data amazing. guy who's very helpful. Yeah. 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 But I, I do know that in the last seven years or something like that, I don't think I have any videos, if you yeah. discount the live stream, with less than 10 million views or something. Because over time, they get more and more. The, yeah. your, your consistency is insane. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know that there's another YouTube channel like that that mm -hmm. has been that consistent over seven years. Mm -hmm. But you also speak about this concept of the Super Mario effect. Mm -hmm. And I was curious if you could explain that, and then I'll ask my question. Okay, okay. Yeah, the Super Mario effect is basically like, no one ever plays Super Mario Brothers or some video game for the first time, it falls into a pit, and is just like, oh my gosh, I fell into a pit, I failed, how embarrassing, I never want to play this game again. You're like... No, okay, crap, there's a pit right there. Okay, next time I'm going to come a little bit faster. I'm going to jump a little earlier. You immediately learn from the failure and you're like stoked to try again. Mm -hmm. And so that's very much my philosophy. If you can gamify your challenges and think of them like a video game, you can learn so much more. You can have more success and have fun while doing it.